Hello, welcome back to another movie review. Today I'm not going to be reviewing a giant monster movie, but I will later. Uh, this is actually an independent slasher film that I'm going to be reviewing, and I wanted to talk about it after I saw it, because I haven't reviewed one of these in a very long time. And I think this is getting me back on the kick of like lower budget indie horror films, and I've been off that for a while, been watching more real movies, as most critics would put it. But this one has definitely gotten me back into the feel of it, and I'm happy to be back on it. And it even features Hellraiser's Doug Bradley, which is always a positive. He's not in it for very long, but he is in it still. That's probably where most of the movies budget went, actually. But if you don't know yet, if you haven't read the title of the video, the movie is Scream Park. Now, it's a typical slash movie. A bunch of teenagers, they're working on in this uh, amusement park called, I think, Fear Park or Fearland. I Frightland. That's it. Frightland. And... They start getting killed off when the place is about to be shut down. Uh, they all have a party to have their last goodbyes, and then one by one they get picked off by the killers. There's two of them in this one. That's not a spoiler. It's in the box. But also, don't read the back of the box because it gives away a plot twist because there's more to it than there's... It, I mean, it is just a slash movie, but there is a twist behind it. So don't read the back if you don't want that given away for you. Um... The movie overall, it's actually not too bad. The acting is pretty solid. The lead girl, Jennifer, she's your typical, you know, virgin character. And she does a pretty decent job, but the best actor in the movie is Doug Bradley. He's only in it, though, for about, like, he only has, like, two minutes worth of screen time, and then he's gone. And then in his scene, he even has the, he even has a puzzle box. And I was like, oh, that's a cute little reference they put in there. Uh, they say on the back, it says, brings to mind Black Christmas or John Carpenter's Halloween. Maybe in sense of just the charm of it, because... It's not as good of quality as those, obviously. I think this had a lower budget than that. There are some scenes where I didn't think they needed green screen. Uh, like, they bro break some glass and that was green screened in. I'm guessing they couldn't afford to fix the door. But they had to shatter real glass anyway, so I don't really know why they chose to make that a green screen effect. And I'm pretty sure there's a scene where he's standing, one of the killers is standing on something, and the background's green screened, which was really odd to see. But other than that, it's pretty good. It's not, it has gore in it, but it's not like overtly gory. It's not on the level of slasher gore like um, The Burning. It's more of just like your standard Friday 13th gore. But it's still entertaining. Like I said, most of the acting is okay, but the one character, he looked very uninterested. He was kind of just there. And it was interesting to find out that this place was actually, this movie was actually filmed in Pennsylvania. Um, nowhere near me, but. They, he's wearing a Pittsburgh uh, Land of, Home of the Zombies shirt. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I looked into the movie later and figured out it was actually filmed partially in Pittsburgh. That was, so that was neat. The movie doesn't have much of a soundtrack other than, like, the one scene. The one guy, he's listening to, like, some death core in his car, and that's about it. I mean, there is some music stings here and there, but other than that... Overall, the movie's not too scary, but I will say there is a few genuinely creepy moments. The one scene actually I was like, oh, that, they did that really well. The angles that they used in this movie are actually surprisingly well done, and this is the director's de directorial debut. So it's nice to see him actually do this properly for his first time. His first time effort was a really well done effort, so hopefully he can improve from here and take everything that was negative about this and make it better in his next film. Maybe not waste the whole budget on Doug Bradley, only have him in there for about like, for about like two minutes. But other than that, uh, and of course, there's this your typical like dark humor about it. Like there's this like one of the characters has like enormous breasts, and they play on that a lot. Uh, and like I said, there's not too much gore, but the blood that they have in there is is actually really well done for what they had. And I was surprised that it was shot as well as it is. Because normally with independent movies like these, they normally aren't really that well shot. But I will say this. It's to do with the audio. I don't think they used the proper microphone for this. Uh, they might have here and there, but every now and again, I had to actually turn up the TV because uh, the audio is very, very light at points. Like they use the camera's microphone 
and they're at a distance, so you can't really hear what they're saying, which is something that really needed to, this is something the director needs to work on. Even when my friends and I, when we do our little horror films and stuff like that, we still manage to get the audio better. Uh, even though I'm saying that right now and I'm using my phone's camera, but I'm like a foot away from my camera. So the audio problem isn't really there as much as it is in here because we're talking about like 10 feet away and they're talking to each other, having a conversation. And it sounds like this, like you can barely hear them. It could just be that I had that problem. I'm not sure if anyone else will notice that problem. But I did think it was kind of silly. Um, but other than that, it's all mostly well done. A few of the characters, a few of the actors did a really good job acting. The character of Marty, he was okay. And then the rest of them were kind of just, you know, your stock slasher movie characters where they're just there to die. And uh, they really don't need to put into that much performance. But um, Nivek Ogre, he did a pretty good job in this, I thought. He played this stereotypical punk. I'm pretty sure that was him anyway. I've never uh, heard of the skinny puppies, skinny puppy before this. Uh, I'll have to look into them, see if they're any good. I hope they are. And this movie, this movie was released by Wild Eye Entertainment. Now I do plan on actually buying more stuff from them now because uh, they do. I'm pretty sure they're like the big into, like not the big, but like they produce a bunch of independent horror films. Uh, and there are also Region Zero discs, which are really cool. Uh, if you don't know what that means, that means that there's no region coding on it. Uh, you don't have to... It's not like Region 1, which is America, Region 2, which is in a foreign country and stuff like that. It's Region Zero, so you don't have to worry about uh, stupid stuff like that. Like living in a different country and wanting to watch this somewhere else. You can just watch it wherever you want. You don't need a region free prey for this. So that's also really cool. Um, some of the movies they have on here in their catalog are uh, Deadly Xmas, Exhumed, The Disco Exorcist, Long Live the Dead, Murder University, Mold, Blood Soaked, and Final Entries. The ones I want to see are Mold, Final Entries, Blood Soaked, and just because it might be interesting, uh, The Disco Exorcist. From the creators of none of that. Okay. Those could have probably all be terrible films, but the one looks like a found footage film, and I have a soft spot for found footage movies. Um, and Mold, uh, if it's handled the way I hope they handle it, that should be a good movie. I don't know the plot of any of them, but I'll just have to take what... I just have my brain has to sit make its own plot for it. But for Screen Park, I really can't give it a review like rating like five or one or five stars i'm just for movies like this i'm just gonna give it a watch it or ignore it uh, i'm gonna give this one a watch it because it is very entertaining it does have a charm to it that 80s slasher movies had plus you got to support the indie guys even though there will be some indie films that i will say ignore downright like if you've ever heard of the movie horno ignore that it's terrible but with this, it is worth watching, and plus, you can get it for 10 bucks. It's not that expensive. Maybe even cheaper on Amazon. I picked this up at a store, and I did really feel entertained to buy it. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out Screen Park, and I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy.